Well, good morning everybody on this Labor Day holiday weekend and welcome to Trinity United Church, the heart in the heart of Huntsville. Welcome in friendship, welcome in faith, and welcome in God's all-inclusive love. Jesus never excluded anybody, and neither do we. Please stand for the singing of our introit. Find a home here. said, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly in our lives. May this be so. Amen. You may be seated. Well, here we are, the last unofficial weekend of summer. Our teachers and students head back to school on Tuesday, and for most of us, we will return to some semblance of order and structure after a busy summer. Some of the trees here in Muskoka are already giving us a taste, a tease of what's to come. And I must say, um, I'm really looking forward to fall. I'm a big fall fan. Anybody else? We have any? Oh, yes! My tribe. A lot of people enjoy the fall. This being the Labor Day Sunday, our message today we will be unpacking how our faith connects to our place of work, whether it be paid work or volunteer work. And if you're wondering about the second part of the message on patience, be patient. <laughs> it's coming next week. Okay, so uh, we will, next week we will talk about living into the word, in other words, learning how to walk the talk. Um, in our announcements this morning, Gord Booker. Gord, can you stand up? Go this Gord will be taking your fun script orders this week. As you know, Gord Mitchell is out uh, because of his knee surgery. By the way, he is recovering nicely and he starts physiotherapy this week, and he hopes to be driving again um, by next month. So, And he's really appreciated the phone calls and check-ins, so keep that up. And as you may have noticed, he's spending even a little more time on the computer. <laughs> so, Gord, hurry up and um, get better and get back here. Now, I'd also um, want to let you know that, of course, back to school, back to church, and we need lots of volunteers. We need morning greeters, scripture readers, coffee helpers, light beamer assistants, audio visual assistants, choir members. Do you like to sing? See si Kyunga. Drivers for Sunday service. This is a big one. I've spoken with a number of seniors and they would really like to get to church on Sunday, but they just have no way of getting here. So if this is a ministry that you think that you can help out with, talk to me or Susie. It doesn't have to be every single Sunday, so you don't have to commit to every single Sunday of every single week and every month. But even if once or twice, if you could say, look, I'm available this Sunday, it would be a wonderful gift to our seniors. And of course, Nancy is always looking for super sandwich helpers. So the poster is posted in the hall. So you can see all the information um, when it comes to volunteering. If we all do our little parts, then we can make the good stuff happen because together we're better. Now, speaking of together and better, 
I'm looking down into the pews this morning. Last week, we had Brooke and Brian. But this morning, Brian has taken his whole brew hair this morning. We have Alexis, we have Ruby Judy. Hi, Ruby Judy. Oh, I don't see Brucey. Brucey never made it. He slept in too, didn't he? I knew that. I knew that. Well, it was so lovely to have the girls here. Alexis, when I looked down and saw you, I said, I know I recognize that girl. But then I had to go over a little further and then I saw your dad and I said, wow. So welcome. So nice to have you here. And uh, Alexis and Ruby Judy and Brooke, um, they're from uh, Bond Head United Church. And I think I baptized all three of you, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, so it's lovely to have you here this morning. Welcome, and I hope you join our light beamers. Your honorary light beamers, by the way. Okay, a big thank you to Jeanette. Jeanette is our coffee host today, or our lemonade host. I understand that our coffee is coming back in a week or so. And I know for our coffee lovers, um, that is a good thing. God moments this week. Anybody have a God moment? Kyunga has, Kyunga has the mic, and we'll get to you, Jeanette, okay. for your announcement. No problem. Hi. So, my God moment actually started last Sunday at this time, pretty much. There was a young lady that was sitting in front of me who I knew was new to the church. And so after the service, I introduced myself to her and we had a short conversation and I asked her um, where she was from. She said she drove over from her cottage in Bala. And I said, what made you choose Trinity? She said, I am a high school teacher in Cambridge. I've been at the cottage all summer. And she said, I am um, going back to high school teaching very shortly. I needed a God fix. And she said, I went on the website to see the churches in Muskoka, and the mission statement for this church is what brought her here. Amen. Amen. All included, welcome in this place. This is not really a God moment, but today is Jim's 80th birthday. <laughs> I think it is a God moment. You actually, you, you actually uh, beat me to the punch, because we're going to sing to him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mr. Jim. <laughs> Any other God moments? Make sure you keep your eyes and ears open, because wherever you are, God shows up as well. All right, Jeanette, I understand you have a couple of announcements. Yeah, first off, no more rocks. <laughs> we have at least 200 now. <laughs> so we are good for rocks. Thank you. One thing about fall for me now is I know at Thanksgiving I don't have to close up the cottage because I live here year round. <laughs> Today, as a special treat for our light beamers, Judy Hall and Andrew Waxel are going to take them for a little tour around to the other churches just to see sort of what's up with them. So after the lighting of the Christ candle, meet Judy and Andrew at the back and you can go on a little wander and we'll see you back at uh, Lemonade Hour. And I think that was it. Oh, I still need two volunteers for the kids, one for next Sunday and one for the Sunday after. Please. Thank you. And also a reminder, if you, if you look into um, your order of service, you will see our fall book study, The Gift of Years, Growing Older Gracefully. And this book is a treasure trove of information and wisdom. So if you'd like to join me in this journey, it's Tuesday afternoon, 2 to 3.30 in the Arno Room, and it starts not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday. And if you're wondering about the book, I believe you can order it at the local bookstore, and it's also available on Amazon. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. You need to be Prime member. You get it in two days. <laughs> <laughs> 
So in our birthday corner this week, Susan Brancellia, she's not here, she's probably celebrating. She's celebrating her birthday today. So birthday blessings and hugs to you, Susan, when you're watching this service later on in the week. And Jim Sheedle is celebrating his milestone birthday as his lovely wife, Lynn, mentioned earlier. The big eight zero. Happy birthday, Mr. Jim. <laughs> and um, also a very faithful online worshiper, Jean Calder. Jean is celebrating her birthday this weekend. I believe it was yesterday, August the 31st, so best wishes and lots of hugs to you, Jean, as well. So let's sing happy birthday to Jim because he's the only one here. Happy birthday to Jim. <laughs> Pretty good, Mr. Jim, I gotta say. It's nice to look around and see some uh, familiar faces back after the summer, and it's lovely to see Phyllis Avard here with her daughter Louise. So lovely to have you out, and of course, Jane Booker's friends with Louise and their pickleball people, and so it's lovely. And if you're visiting with us today, I'm not sure where you're from, don't want to sort of kind of point you out, but I'd like to say a special welcome. And, oh, you're from Huntsville? Lovely. And uh, we trust the service will be a blessing to you and that you'll be a blessing to others this coming week. All right. Any other birthdays, anniversaries, or celebrations? I'd like to say special good morning to Kay. Kay is sitting in our front row. Kay is there and she has her dog, Storm. And of course, this is her service dog, so although you may be tempted to reach out and touch Storm, um, try to resist, but be sure to say good morning to Kay, because it's lovely to have you here. And Ruth is back as well. So, see, there are benefits to fall. Everybody gets back. And by the way, our Back to Church Sunday is September the 22nd, our official Back to Church Sunday. All right, let's take a few moments, shall we? Let's settle our bodies and our minds as we prepare our hearts for worship. This is something you can do with us at home as well. Close your eyes and, and just pay attention to your breathing. Take a couple of deep breaths. You've probably been rushing around. Maybe you've had guests on the long Labor Day weekend. Maybe there are guests coming up. Let's just be in this moment right now. Quiet that internal chatter and just let the dust of worry and the dust of hurry settle. Scripture tells us to be still and to know that I am God. Be still because we are always in the loving presence of spirit. Join me now in the call to worship as printed inside your order of service and as will appear on your screens at home. The work of God is love. If we want to get closer to God, get closer to each other. Worker God, be with us now. Help us to connect our work with our faith as we strive to be the salt of the earth and the light to our world. Let us celebrate God's presence together. Our opening hymn on this Labor Day Sunday, sing a happy hallelujah. 224.
You may be seated. And now we've come to the time in our service when we light the Christ candle both here and at home. And we light the candle as a symbol of Jesus' presence with us. And of course, we are called to shine the light of Jesus into the world to help make this world a gentler and brighter place for the whole human family. So now I'm going to call upon our light beamers and our honorary light beamers, our jammers, Jesus and me, uh, from Bond Head to come up for the lighting of our Christ candle. Wow, Alexis, no. <laughs> You're taller than me. No? and Andrew and I think you're going on a little bit of a field trip this morning. So enjoy. Are you going to St. Andrew's church? I'm not sure where they're going. Oh, there goes Andrew. Now, if our honorary light beamers prefer to stay, they can do that. If they want to go, there's no pressure. You can do whatever you want to do. What? You don't want to stay? Oh, so bad. I won't take it personally. Oh dear. Ah, where are we? Join me now in the opening prayer as printed inside your order of service and as will appear on your screens at home. 
On this Labor Day Sunday, we lift up all people who are working either for pay or as volunteers. Creator God, help us to build a world where all workers are valued. At times, we may have blindly bought goods made by people who are woefully underpaid and who work in unsafe conditions. Forgive us. Give us the courage to live out our faith, not only here in church on a Sunday morning, but in our places of work, in our community, throughout the week. Amen. Our second hymn this morning, as we remain seated, I'm going to live so God can use me. Voices United 575. Jeanette McCullough and Kyung Ali are going to bring us, I guess we'll be the last of our summer music, right? Because the choir will be back in the stalls anyway next week, correct? Oh, well maybe they'll just be there to sit there and, and to lead us. We miss the choir, we'll see. Okay, we do miss the choir, don't we? We do, but we're going to have a lovely duet now with Jeanette and Kyung. What are we playing and singing today? So this is called Para Siempre, which, yes, is Spanish. It actually means for all eternity, he is ever merciful. But it also has some English parts. Love and joy. 
us pray. God of grace, may your word of truth abide deep within our souls. May we not only listen to God's word, but also live it out in our daily lives. True blessing comes when we apply God's word to our lives. Our New Testament reading today is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. Jesus is calling us to be the salt of the earth and a light to the world. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. People do not light a lamp and put it under a bushel basket. Rather, they put it on the lampstand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Hear what the Spirit is saying to our hearts. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our guiding light and our wholeness. Amen. Work. The nature of work in the 21st century is evolving rapidly due to several key trends and developments. As you know, COVID-19 accelerated the adoption of remote work and working from home. Many organizations and workplaces are now embracing hybrid models where employees actually split their time between home and office, providing greater flexibility. Many routine and repetitive tasks are being taken over by automated machines and AI thus changing the whole nature of jobs. Workers are now required to adapt to new roles of simply managing these new technologies. As automation handles technical tasks, there is an increasing demand for soft skills, creativity, critical thinking, problem solving, and emotional intelligence. And the boundary between work and personal life can blur, especially with remote work. In some parts of the world, employers are no longer permitted to text or email employees after a certain time. Companies are also offering flexible work hours, wellness programs, and mental health programs to enhance employee satisfaction and productivity. Suffice to say, work today looks a whole lot different than it did 30 or 40 years ago. However, although its form is definitely changing, work still plays an important and significant contributor in our daily lives. It serves way more than just a paycheck. Many of us derive a sense of identity and purpose from our work. It also provides psychological and emotional value, completing tasks, achieving goals, checking boxes, crossing the things off our list, can provide that sense of accomplishment and satisfaction. But work also provides key spiritual dimensions to our lives. Let's look more closely at some of these spiritual dimensions. Jesus challenges us today with these words. You are the salt of the earth and the light to our world. Let's look at how our work, whether in our home or in our communities, how it can reflect 
the essence of being salt and light people. First of all, maybe we need to recognize that our talents and skills are given by God to serve others and to contribute to a greater good, thus infusing our daily tasks with a spiritual significance. Colossians 3, 23 to 24, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for your boss. Then in today's reading, we hear these words again, you are the salt, you are the light. This is God's love language. Have you read Gary Chapman's book, The Five Love Languages? Anybody here? We did it as a part of our book study a number of years ago. Valerie put her hand up. If you haven't read this book, I suggest you get it and read it because it could significantly change your relationship with your spouse, with your children, your partners. We all have our own love language, Chapman says. And in order for us to feel loved, we need to hear our love language spoken to us. But I digress. Now I know this congregation is full of bright and salty people. I know that for a fact, but if I dare start to point somebody out, I know I would miss somebody and I'd be up on the cross, so I'm not gonna do that. But you know who they are. And you may be a salt and light person yourself. And if you are, bravo. So, what is this salt all about anyway? Well, as you know, salt enhances the flavor of our food. And if we leave the salt in the shaker, it's useless. It's worthless if it doesn't come in contact with our food. I mean, the salt isn't going to do any good to our french fries if we keep the salt in the shaker, if we don't shake the salt on our fries. What good is it? No good. So what about us? Our work and our interactions can enhance and bring out the best in other people, whether through kindness, through encouragement, through creativity. We have the power to uplift and enhance the lives of people around us. But if we keep a lid on that love, if we keep a lid on that compassion and refuse to shake and sprinkle it, what good are we? Jesus said, you are the light of the world. What do you think about when you think of a light? I think of a, a lighthouse. And I think about how that lighthouse and that light is there to guide mariners through the foggy evenings and keep them away from the jagged shores. Light symbolizes guidance. Light symbolizes clarity and hope. And just as light can help us find our way, our actions and our words can guide others towards truth and towards goodness. In our workplace, being a light may mean leading by example, maybe mentoring somebody else. Maybe being a light means advocating for fairness for everyone. When we work with courage and when we work with integrity, we are contributing to a world and creating a world where light will overcome the darkness. The light will overcome the darkness of suffering and ignorance. When I was home visiting my mom recently, I was the grateful and tearful recipient of several workers' salt and light 
in their form of kindness and compassion. Not only did these nurses take exceptional time and care with my mom, who now has multiple physical and mental issues at this end stage of life, but they were also kind to me and my sister Lorna. They were a beacon of light and hope to us both. Here's my telephone number, one of the nurses said. Take this. Call me any time you want an update on your mom. It must be so difficult living so far away. And the other nurse said, when I have my cup of tea, I'll come in and I'll sit down with your mom and I'll keep her company. And she said, don't worry, Diane. I will treat your mom as though she were mine. <laughs> Salt and light language. That's God's language. That's love language. That day, those nurses were speaking God's love language. And those healing words went straight to my heart. So whether in a paid position like these nurses or a volunteer in the workplace, these are opportunities where we can serve others and show compassion. Those nurses' words of compassion were balm to my soul. What are some of the other spiritual dimensions of our work? Well, how about maintaining integrity and ethical behavior? When we do this, our work demonstrates our commitment to Christ-like character and values. And when we choose honesty and fairness in the workplace, we're building trust. We're building positivity. And we're building an environment where our values align with God's loving principles of life. And work also contributes to the well-being of our community. By working diligently and ethically, we are contributing to a thriving, supporting community. Our work can help meet the needs of others and to foster a sense of shared purpose. When we are collaborating with others and building strong, supportive relationships within our work and our volunteer lives, we are living in harmony, and we are working together for the collective well-being and good. 1 Corinthians 12, 4, 7, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes all of them. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good, end of quote. We all have our gifts. We all do something well. We all have something to offer, not only here at Trinity, but out into the wider community. And I know when I look down, I see that. I know the people that are working at the food banks. I know the people at the table. I know the people at the Salvation Army. I know the people working with community living. God's salt and light language is also embedded in our stewardship. Being a good steward of the resources entrusted to us, including time, our skills, and finances, it's a spiritual responsibility. And this involves using what we have wisely for the benefit of others and bringing God's vision for our world right here where we are. Luke 16.10, whoever can be trusted with very little can be also trusted with much. 
and who is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Another spiritual dimension to our work is that it's a means of personal and spiritual growth. Facing our challenges, learning new skills, interacting with diverse people can all strengthen our character and deepen our faith. The final spiritual dimension that can transform how we approach our work, volunteer or paid, it's a way that we can infuse deeper meaning and align our work with our faith. What is that? It's called balance and rest. <laughs> I know some of you who need a good rest after this summer. The revolving door, I've heard about that revolving door, guests for three weeks at a time, people coming and going. We need to acknowledge the importance of rest and Sabbath in our daily work habits. Recognizing that rest is a gift from God and it helps us to be more effective. Don't look at me like that, Jane. And more focused. <laughs> on our work. I know it's my growing edge, okay? <laughs> I'm a work in progress. <laughs> Jesus said, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. A life-work balance helps us to be more effective as salt and light people. It allows us to approach our work with renewed energy ensuring that we bring our best selves to life's table. Salt and light are the language of God, the language of grace, the language of hope, and the language of love. And when this language is translated into action, it becomes the most beautiful language that's ever spoken. On this Labor Day weekend, as we get set to head back to our work routines and back to school, may we strive to enhance the good in the world, to illuminate and guide the paths of those around us, and to find a balance between working and our need to rest and recharge our minds and bodies. God seasons us with God's presence. God put God's light into us. Together, we are all God's co-workers. And in being so, we are called to be the heart, the hands, the feet of Christ in the world. We are called to embody Christ and in turn, God's love in our hurting world. Our real job, whether we realize it or not, is to shake God's love and to shine God's light into every single moment of our ordinary lives. One shake, one light beam at a time. With God's help, May this be so. Amen.
Our next hymn in our service today can be found in our More Voices hymn book. This is one of my new favorites. Christ has no body now but yours. You like it too, Cheryl, don't you? I saw you nodding your head there. Yes. Please stand in body or in spirit as you are able. One, isn't it? You like that one? So just before our invitation for offering, there are many ways we bring our gifts and our offerings forward. And this week I had an offering that showed up in my email box, and it was from Faye McKnight. Now don't put your head down now, Faye, because this is beautiful. And I'd like to call it an ode to the last unofficial weekend of summer. And this is what Faye has written. Leaves quiver, shaking off the last of the night's heavy dew. Shafts of sunlight try to ease their shivering. Trees begin to shed their fruits in anticipation of autumn frosts. Summer yellows fading, flora browning, as days shorten once again. I savor the last gifts of summer and await glorious autumn splendor. Thank you for that offering. Generous and compassionate one, may the hungry be well fed, and may the well fed hunger for abundance and justice for all. And may we help to bring a little bit of heaven 
right here on earth. Our morning tithes and offerings will now be received. note I mentioned last week about Glenn Boone being inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame, remember? Well, he's here today. 
And he has something in his pocket that uh, if you uh, talk to him really nicely, he may give you one. Where, where is he? Where is Glenn? Oh, you're hiding over there. Okay. Well, Glenn has his very own hockey card now. And he's as good as Wayne Gretzky. So if you talk to him nicely and congratulate him for this wonderful achievement, you may get lucky like I did, because I've got my card in on my desk. So I'd like to say congratulations again. Now that you're in here in person, Glenn, that was a wonderful achievement. And he's still playing hockey, by the way. He's 80, so Jim, take a note. Take a page out of his book, right? Not taking up hockey. <laughs> so I, I was talking to both Shirley and Glenn before the service, and apparently it was a wonderful ceremony and a wonderful celebration. And I think he was one of five men from Huntsville. Is that correct, Glenn? Yes. That received this honor. And 31 total inductees, so well done. We're proud of you. And now as we remain seated, let's sing hymn number 400, Lord, listen to your children praying. God together. Let us pray. Companion God, as we celebrate Labor Day, let us hear once again Jesus' call to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Our daily work, whether volunteer or paid, has the potential to reflect your love in all our social interactions. Etch this light and salt upon our hearts, your language of love. Worker God, meet us here today. Help us to work for a world where all workers are valued. A world where those who clean houses can also afford to buy houses to live in. A world where those who grow food can also afford to eat their fair share a world where all workers everywhere share in the abundance you have given us. Help us to shine Christ's light, and in doing so, make a difference, be it ever so small, in our part of the world. God, we ask for your healing presence for all those who are needing strength and healing in mind, body, and soul. We especially bring before you this morning Gord Mitchell, Vivian Rowland, Ethel Robinson, Jean Fairhall, Heather Hawken, Rick Waring, Cheryl Demain and her daughter Natalie, David and Thelma Beaudry, the family of Irene Green, and Derek Shepard. And now, in the silence of our hearts, we lift up to you our own personal cares and concerns. God, hear all our prayers, and in your love, answer. Now in the words that Jesus, our spiritual mentor, taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn on this Labor Day Sunday is a familiar one to most here and at home. Guide me, O thy great Jehovah. 651.